Hello, experimenters. I'm Dance Master Techno Viking Wannabe Seth Noir, and the man behind the camera with the great handwriting, DJ Yassine Ain't Loud. And today, we have part two of our Hook's Law Experiments. So just like last week, we have a spring that we're interested in. And this spring is contained inside of the same lucite tube. And there's the mass cylinder at the end of the spring. So this week, instead of having various masses provide our elongation, we'll have centripetal acceleration provide our elongations. So while we're here, we can find the mass of the brass cylinder, just like last week, written on the end of the tube. You should already know because you'll be using the same tube as last week. And the only mass that we need that's new this week is we need the mass of the spring. No, this isn't the exact same mass as there, but it's close enough. And you use the triple beam balance to find that mass. And then what we do with the masses is we add them up to find the total mass, but not quite add them up like we might think. Total mass, the mass of the brass, plus one-third the mass of the spring. You might be wondering where this one-third came from. What kind of crazy physics am I telling you? If you want to know where that comes from, consider moment of inertia. Or if you don't like that, consider kinetic energy. Either way, we'll tell you where this one-third came from, but there's no way of avoiding calculus to find that. So the experiment is the brass cylinder attached to the spring sends in circles. Now, it's not oscillating at the end of this, so the restoring force of the spring will be equal and opposite to the centripetal force that we're providing with the spin. So for each elongation that we'll measure in centimeters, we're also going to get a frequency with it in RPMs or revolutions per minute. And then we're going to graph this. We're going to graph it our force in newtons, and our centripetal accelerations in meters per second squared. The force will come from our equation last week. With K, the spring constant, R, the elongations, minus R1 in centimeters. K and R1 are from last week, so we'll have centimeters, and then the K will be newtons over centimeters, centimeters will cancel out, leaving newtons, which we need. Even just newtons. And then some triple acceleration, we consider r times omega squared, where omega is the radial velocity. But as we said, the frequency we're going to have is in RPMs. So we have to do some converting to get to SI. <coughs> well, there's two pi radians per revolution. Got to square that. One minute per 60 seconds. Got to square that and then you'll get your conversion to this. The radial acceleration, 4 pi squared, RPM squared, R over 3600 to get our meters over seconds squared. So, when you graph this, you'll get a slope. And you tell me what this slope represents. I won't tell you. I won't tell you. And while I have my authority voice on, we should go over some safety, children. We will be in the dark, and we'll have a spinning cylinder below us when we take our measurements. So, first thing, make sure this is bolted on nice and tight. It should be on tight, but just double check it. If you have long hair, tie it back. If you have any necklaces on, make sure they're tucked in. If you have any eyeglasses on, make sure they're firmly on your head because you don't want them falling in to the spinning wheel of death. We will be in the dark. Make sure both doors are open. And we need a clear trajectory out of here in case anyone gets sick. 
So make sure all chairs are pushed in, all jackets and bags are off the floor and on the table, and we need one more thing for this lab. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. A vomit bucket. <laughs>